Hey guys, Andy back here from Mediocre Hobbies with yet another painting tutorial. This time we're going to be working on the uh, Beast Boss, the, the Orc War Boss on foot um, for the Beast Snagger range. Um, fantastic miniature, I had a lot of fun um, getting it built and painted. Um, that actually completes out my uh, Orc army. Um, and it actually rounds off the orc videos that I'm going to be doing on this channel for the foreseeable future. Um, I've managed to get a lot of cruel boys and a lot of beast snagger boys um, fully painted on this channel, giving you guys a great example of how to do that. Um, moving forward, I'm going to be looking at some um, Imperial Guard regiments, um, a lot of Space Marines. I'm going to be working on the new Black Templars now soon. Um, so uh, stick around on the channel for that. Subscribe if you'd like to see any of those uh, those videos come up. Um, so. Without further ado, let's move along to the painting tutorial. I do hope you enjoy it. I hope you learn a few bits and pieces and um, yeah, let's stick around to the end. Okay guys, let's get started. This is the Beast Boss miniature that I've prepared. I've done the normal um, procedure for, for me for preparing the model, which is the Chaos Black Spray all over. And then the Zenithal of Grey Seer from the top, just to catch all those raised areas. I've also gone ahead and based the miniature just to get that out of the way. Um, you can see the, the way I based them in my basing video. So we're going to start with the first coat that's going to be applied to all skin. Uh, it's going to be Plague Bear Flesh, the one I've been using for all my Orc tutorials so far. This miniature is um, slightly more awkward to get to certain places on him. Um, he's quite a, a layered up miniature. There's lots of armor on top of fur, on top of skulls and claws. So you just want to take your time. Um, it doesn't matter if you hit anything you shouldn't on this particular stage as everything else will cover over the plague bear flesh um, quite easily. But there are definitely bits of skin that you're going to need to uh, to look for underneath armpits, the backs of arms inside that big uh, skulled hand claw that he has um, to get his knuckles and stuff. So just take your time, pay attention to the miniature and try and find all of the parts of skin. And when you do find them, it should look something like this. Now we're going to move on to Gorgrunt of Fur to get all of the cloth, um, leather and strap bits um, base coated up. This is mostly his, uh, his trousers, um, all the straps that hold on his armor and his pelts and stuff. As you can see, I didn't load the brush from the contrast there, went back, filled it up, and now it's flowing much better. As you can see with this miniature, when I first saw him, he was actually the miniature of the range that I was kind of the most indifferent to. I wasn't, like, I just thought he was very kind of squat and wide. Um, so as you can see on the base, I've built him up a little bit um, using a few layers of cork and sanded over that just to make him a little bit taller. And I just think that brought the proportions into a nicer line in my head. Um, I love the miniature now with the way it is. Looks like he's kind of rearing down over something, so it's cool. So here's all of the brown bits. I've gone on and base coated the uh, tusks with the same brown. That'll make going over with bone later very easy. Now we're on to our trusty Black Templar contrast. This one is just to throw a quick coat of black onto the boots. Um, just to give that black military boot look. Take your time. Obviously, I, I've uh, gone through the trousers there with the brown, so you don't want to be hitting that with the black. That'll stain it quite badly. And because I've already done the base, um, I was being a little bit extra careful around that, not to get splotches of black all over that. So here's the boots all blacked out. Now it's time for that step that um, pulls him into the same scheme. This is my Griffhound Orange. Orange is the underlying theme for all of my uh, orcs. Which is actually my favorite color, so I try and incorporate into as many uh, army schemes as possible. So load up your brush quite heavily and make sure it goes in between all of those scales, the big furry pelt on his back, all those bits and pieces um, are going to go Griffhound Orange. I keep thinking that the like the skin and the fur should be two different colors, and then I keep seeing you know pictures of old '80s squigs. In magazines and stuff some of them did have big mohawks and everything but all those mohawks and stuff were the same color as the skin so crazy orcs with their crazy models so here's all the orange i think there's just enough to make the model pop but uh in not overbearing 
Once all the orange was on him, I really did fall in love with them. Now it's time for my least favorite part. <laughs> Base coating all of the metallic parts with lead belcher. Like I've said in multiple videos before, this is the part that takes the longest. You need to take your time, find all those armor panels, all those rivets, anything that's supposed to be metallic and block it out with lead belcher. Being super careful not to hit any of the other parts. I do think this is my least favorite part because it, it cuts back to like actual paint. This is a base paint, so it's quite thick. And you get so used to how quickly contrast kind of flows in everywhere and you can get a coat on something quite quickly. Whereas with lead belcher, it is literally stroke by stroke. And here is all the metallics. As you can see, it's quite a lot. Now it's time to break up all those metallics with some Balthazar gold. Where the Balthazar gold is kind of up to you. All I use it for is breaking up the metallics. So anywhere where you see two different armor panels jutted up against each other, you can consider blocking one of them in in the Balthazar gold. So the teeth on the sword, for instance, are clearly extra panels that were beaten on top of the sword to make it more jagged and more dangerous. So the fact that they're two different materials means that you can easily just say one was bronze, one was steel. Same with his big armored claw in his hand. I'm going to do quite a lot of that in bronze just to break it up and make it more interesting. And obviously in the wash and uh, highlight stage later on, they'll pop a lot more. They'll look really cool. So here you go. Here's the miniature with all of the bronze parts done. You can see what I mean now by breaking up all that silver. I think it definitely adds a lot to the miniature. Volop is pink. Inside the mouth. Um, you want a small brush for this, but not a particularly good condition brush. Um, Cause obviously you're gonna be stabbing it in between teeth. So it's gonna, your brush isn't gonna thank you for doing this, but it's an important step. I obviously took the time as well to use Volopus Pink as the base coat for the big crazy eye on the targeting squig. I didn't think I was going to do this before I had finished doing the mouth and then I saw it and was like, eh, that's probably a pretty good base coat for that. Big bloodshot crazy eye. Then it's hollering sand. This is the base coat for all of his teeth. This is where you want to go back to a nice fine brush. Take your time and layer up those teeth. If you've been paying attention to the series on how to paint all the orcs, I've been mentioning a lot about you know parts of miniatures that people won't notice that you don't need to put a lot of effort into. This being the war boss, if you put this army on the table, you're at a games night, you're around with some friends, they're going to be picking them up. They're going to be having a look at them. So you want to spend a little bit more time on these guys, put in that little bit of extra effort. Um, it will be rewarded later on. So now it's time to bring all those colors together, everything we've base coated so far. I'm gonna have Sarah from Sepia for this. It's my go-to orc shade um, with all of the different old beaten armor panels, skin and fur. I think it pulls them all together really nicely. So load up your brush with a lot of Sepia. Just go to town. Pay attention, make sure it doesn't pool anywhere you don't want it to, but also make sure it gets into all the nooks and crannies. So I tend to overload an area first and then pull the excess away. Overloading it first means that you're gonna get it everywhere it needs to go. See the amount I put on the sword? Obviously it's far too much. Now as I drag it and pull it around, I'll take some of it off. There's no pooling on the sword, as you can see. And this is the miniature after the shade has dried. Okay, time to move on to the layering stage. So the first thing we're gonna do is hit all of those orange parts. I'm gonna use Trolls Layer Orange for this. And um, we're going to give it a light dry brush all over. Just to pull that orange skin and fur back away from the brown tones and bring it back into a more vibrant orange theme. 
like orcs are fairly excessive people um they do like their bright colors and their boldness they definitely don't like to hide these ain't no commandos these are beast snaggers they're proud of all the trophies they've taken so having brightly colored skins and furs all over them is part of their culture Don't worry about hitting the metallic parts or anything like that. We obviously don't go crazy, but as you're going to hit a little bit of it during the layering process of the metallics, we will fix up any of those bits and pieces. Now, to pull the orange up even more, we're going to be using a, a bone theme now. So we're going to be able to use Shafty Bone. This is also going to be the highlight color for all of the uh, brown and black fabrics of the black military boots and the brown pants. So we're going to be dry brushing Shabdi Bone all over the skin, all over the cloth, all over the boots. Just to make all those different bits pop. You can see already what that's done to the pelt. As you can see, I usually pick one direction to go with a dry brush. I don't generally go back and forth in that crazy motion. It's just downward most of the time. One direction. Aiming for the little targeting squig as well. He's obviously orange, so he gets the same treatment as all the pelts and fur. And those boots. All it does is catch the edges. You may think bone over black or bone over orange or bone over brown doesn't seem to make a, a lot of sense, but as you can see, it just catches the edges. It makes it look like light is hitting it. That's all we're trying to achieve. These are these nice uh, quick tips and tricks to get the things done fast. When I said earlier that people will be picking up this miniature, that doesn't mean they're going to be looking at you know his knees and his pants and his boots. They're going to be looking at his face, his big gnarly claw and his sword. So there's all that dry brushing done. The lead belcher time. We're going to be giving all of the metallic parts a light dry brush. This will pull the, um, the brassy coppery tones to the metal tones a little bit more. That claw is ridiculously cool. When I first thought on the packaging, I thought it was a uh, it was a big bone skull, like an animal trophy that he'd taken. Until I saw all the rivets and stuff in it, and I was like, "Well, this is actually a metallic." Represents their monster hunting nature. As you can see, the dry brush just catches the edges. Adds a nice little bit of highlighting without actually spending a whole lot of time on it. And here's where we are going to go in and spend a little bit of time because we are actually going to layer up the skin now. I'm going to be jumping to Elysian Green. Small brush. And doing some good old fashioned brush highlight work, or layer work. So I'm going to start in on his face, and it's basically all of the raised parts. So his cheekbones, his ears, forehead, gums, his big lips. And his chin, all those bits and pieces I need to get hit with the uh, Elysian Green. The face in this miniature actually being the very center and the focal point means that it will stand out a mile if you put the extra effort in. And there's the face that's been layered as you can see and the side that hasn't. You can see the difference. Take your time. When you've completed the layering process, it should look something like this. As you can see his chest and his belly, they're all popping now because of the layering process. Now we're going to jump back to you, Shafty Bone, and we're going to give that light dry brush to the skin as well. Actually, does make a huge difference. The 
the reason we're doing this at the end and not when we were doing the other Yashabdi bone bits is I want the skin to be as clean as possible. So using that green layer work we did before with the Elysian Green to tidy up any of the orange or any of the metal or any of those bits and pieces that may have hit off the skin as we were going along. So that's why that's hit last. And with that, I think the face looks amazing. Just hitting a few bits that with a second coat just to make sure they pop the way I like it. There we have it. Sticking with the Shapti bone, this time we're going to layer up all of the tusks on the miniature. This is another one of those kind of tedious steps. Um, uh, the Yashabdi bone does not give a great coverage in one coat, so it will be two coats over all of these guys. You want to just go about uh, as close to the base of the horn as possible, and then in a motion that's pulling the brush towards you, just streak it down. It's quick and effective. That gets the job done. So one of the horns looks like. And here's what all of the horns look like. Like I said, it's quite a weak coat. So this is me going over with the second coat just to make that bone pop. I'm only really doing the second highlight on the top parts. So the bits that like the lighter hitting, the underneath of them, I don't really care about. Just adds to the shadow effect. There's what a second coat does to it. As you can see, it's a huge difference. Onto a bit of Gorgon to fur. And these are just blocking in the his bobbins, his little hair bands. I didn't really know what to do with these up until this point. All I want to do is separate them from the orange fur. So throwing a little coat of Gorgon to fur over them does that. They act as like leather bindings or whatever else he would use to uh, hold his hair together. Without being too bold a statement. Simple and quick. Now it's on to a bit of a fist on red. This is with the finest point of brush you have. And we are going to go in and paint his eyes. I actually forgot to mention before when I was going around all those tusks with the Ushapti bone, we did in fact layer up the teeth on the orc as well. That's why he's got those pearly whites now. I always like to put the point of the bush in against the nose and then pull it outwards. That's why the model got flipped upside down there so I could do it with the other side. And now we have a bit of a controversial on this channel. We are going to mix a bit of pink together. So Yushapti Bone with some Screamer Pink. It's going to be predominantly Yushapti Bone. And this is just to layer up the um, targeting quick crazy eye a little bit. Want to keep it that kind of pinky focused uh, looking eye. Without going uh, too bright and vibrant, the bone will keep it like a natural tone. Looks something like this. And then a little bit of Abaddon Black to draw in the little uh, targeting pupil on the uh, targeting squig. Just one quick line down. And it looks like one suit. And here we have the finished kill boy. Thank you guys who have been watching multiple videos for following along with my um, orc playlist um, of tutorials. They are now coming to a close with this guy. We're going to be moving on to a lot of imperial stuff next. Going to be showing you how to paint a bunch of different imperial guard regiments and 
and a bunch of the new Black Templars and some Sisters of Battle stuff. So if you're interested in any of those things, subscribe to the channel. Um, if you have anything specific that you would like to see me do in a video, drop it in the comments below or any questions about any of the things you've seen in any of my videos, drop it in a comment below. And I do my very best to answer each and every one of them um, in a timely manner. Um, thank you very much for watching and um, yeah, I will see you guys in the next video. Bye.